Hello, this is Out of the Blue comes Francis Zhu. I'm Francis, and welcome to my show. Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Out of the Blue comes Francis Zhu show. Today I have my friend Colin Cutter joining me in this episode, and we are going to together explore some topics around trust, around worthiness,、um, spontaneity. So I met Colin.、Um, I believe it was eleven years ago, right before I was about to join David Hofmeister and the Living Miracles community. I was in Sydney, and I had my Cross in Miracles group. And Colin came to my group. Colin lives in Sydney as well, so he came to my group, and I was just sharing that I'm leaving the group. I'm leaving. The city, the country. I, 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 I'm about to go on this big trip to for mind training, and I felt like Colin was just like a sponge. And then when I came back from the monastery, we connected, and we have stayed very, very connected for the last eleven years because Colin has been in the community、um, for a period of time, and then. Now he's in our co-living center. So, so welcome, Colin. Thank you, Francis. Yeah, thanks for inviting me. It's、uh, beautiful to be with you. A week ago, we kind of touched base, and and Colin mentioned you mentioned that、um, this topic of worthiness came to mind, and you would like to explore. Maybe we can use this podcast to explore. And then, very interestingly. Two hours before <laughs> before the podcast,、um, I got a message from Colin, <laughs> and the message was that I feel so blank in my mind. I don't think I would have anything to say. I don't think I can do it. So maybe that's cut off. And I I said yes, no problem at all. First, but after that. I heard in my mind that this is a call for love, and this is the the very thing we're we're gonna explore, which is worthiness. So basically, we had a call just to connect, and here we are now just to continue the exploration around this topic because. One thing I I do know is that I give my life over to the spirit to guide me out of this this false beliefs about everything about the world about myself, and in that every single decision in my life. Was given over to the spirit as well. So when it comes down to practicality, I know that everything I do, including this podcast, has to be given to me by the spirit. The format was given to me. The guest each week was given to me. Even the topic was given to me. And. This morning, when when you sent me that message, I actually felt immediate activation, and I thought, "Wow, this is how the spirit give to me something." You know, the same like you before this moment, my mind was completely empty and blank. There was nothing, no thoughts, no, and、um, nothing to say. If I look into the future. For this time slot, but I also know that I'm waiting on the spirit 
to give me anything he would have me do. And when the text came, actually, though I said yes first, but afterwards I felt the activation and I thought this is how it was given. So here we are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, thanks, Francis. Um, I, I mean, I was kind of thinking when we first joined around the idea of doing this, it might have been a couple of weeks ago, and I, I do clearly remember feeling a lot of inspiration. And, um, and then I think we might have talked again about a week ago, and um, I just, I just, I guess I noticed... Uh, my mind like especially over the last few days and in particular yesterday I just it was kind of like it, it, in some ways it feels a miracle that we're actually <laughs> joining right now because yesterday it was like the whole day I was like there's no way no no way I'm not doing it and then this morning I was I felt as like a very very small opening but it was like look it's not it's just not strong enough I'm just gonna say no and to be to be completely honest with you I actually felt I felt good when you when you wrote back the second time. Said I feel like I feel like we're still to talk. You know, there was no like we're going to do a recorded thing. But in the back of my mind, I actually, I guess I just had this feeling of almost like, well, maybe this is an opportunity to to go somewhere that I feel mostly in my life I've been reluctant to go. Like there's certain like signposts, if you like, that I've taken to me. I know, don't go. You know, too scary. Don't do it. I'm out of control, I, you know, I don't, um, but, you know, just when we joined a little bit before we actually started this recording, like I could just feel a more of an opening, like it's almost like the opposite of what I think. It's like, well, maybe this is the opportunity to, to really almost um, to, to, to put the, the mind training into, into practice. It's like, okay, so I don't have anything. Can I, can I say, here I am, can I trust and just see what comes through? So um, I just thank you for that, for just that joining, because I feel like, yeah, this is um, somewhere, There is this is a direction I want to go in. I, I don't want to always be running from some discomfort because, you know, in the end, that it feels like that running almost gets to the point where that's more painful anyway than just facing, yeah, I don't know if that, if, if that all makes sense, but it's kind of the thoughts that are coming up at the moment, yeah. I know that even um, when David talked about his earlier years, when the spirit took him on five years of travel to places he'd never been and people he'd never met, and even to different course groups or churches, different gatherings for him to speak, he basically just heard the spirit te um, telling him, just show up. That's all that is required of you. And when I listened to that, I felt so comforted because the goal um, that we have on this spiritual journey is to let go of everything that we have learned and everything we think we know. So we actually enter into every moment with this mind that I don't know, and I need to be guided, and I need to be told what to do, how to think, and how to perceive, and even how what to say. And I I know it is like a it's a process of letting go, gradually feeling comfortable to to trust that space, to truly tap into that openness and that state of i'm just here waiting for your instructions yeah yeah it's sort of like is it like it does feel i mean for me i would say that type of feeling is quite almost like right on the edge where it does feel like the fear level does feel like it it gets quite high and i can see where it's almost quite easy to to even uh, believe some thoughts are oh, probably better off not doing, you know, like 
And then suddenly, once that decision almost, it seems like the fear is gone. Oh, good, that was the right decision. But I feel like maybe this is something we can get into. I feel like this is can be the trick of the mind because, of course, you know, the ego, the, the ego would never um, want me to really step fully and face this um, this kind of terror and see that it's nothing. You know, like it wants it wants me to believe that it's real. And and continually avoid, I guess, these opportunities to. I suppose. I suppose what I feel like what I'm talking about is like really to you know to step up and to um, step into this this strength. And 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 you you know you mentioned the trust and the trust feels like a a key part of this. That I know. I think somewhere in the course it might say when 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 the trust goes, everything everything's gone. And you know it does. It does kind of feel a bit like that, actually. Like, um, so, um, yeah. Yeah. And I think what is also, like, really helpful is to always remember the purpose because Jesus even says in the Course that if you rely on yourself, then you would not be able to learn because you think you already know. So you have no motivation to learn. And I feel like... I really do not want to learn anything that is of myself, the, the ego self. What I really feel the purpose of my life, and then it comes down to really every single day and every single task and every single thing is to actually learn the trust that I can trust. And without truly give, giving this moment to the spirit, I would never be able to learn. You know, it's just going to be concepts and words. So to really be able to rely on Jesus, on spirit, on God, we have to be able to give this moment and just walk into this moment and just say, this is yours to direct. The more we we, we do that, the more we actually see the miracle in this moment. And that is the only thing we can learn, really. That's the only thing that we can count on. Eventually, that, that motivates us to, to, to trust more and more. So the trust is, is developed over time with more miracles being witnessed. And I just really feel that when the purpose is clear, you know, when I keep remembering what I'm doing anything for is for that development of trust, is for that um, experience that the spirit is living inside of me and the spirit is directing me. Yeah, one of the things when you're talking was like, it's just this thing of, you know, being fully... Um, fully trusting to, you know, to be given something in the moment um, because I could see that there was part of my mind like almost like looking back to past occasions where maybe the format was a little different. It might have looked a little bit more like me being in some kind of interview role where I had some already ideas in mind and questions and something to start things off with and um and it almost felt like this just felt like um yeah yeah i can feel i can feel somewhere i can feel the spirit in there just going you know like it, in, in some ways it it's even fairly gentle it's only if i make up you know a story about you know who's going to be listening and i've got to say the right thing but in a way i'm just here talking to you and um and um you know like somewhere somewhere I just I want to keep opening to saying yes and to say yes to the spirit and I think I think one of the things that um that I'm feeling with this too is how important how helpful it is when like joining with someone rather than just making a decision on my own because I feel like you know the, the talk we had um just before this started just feels like it it just helped me to see, oh, it's, I want to, I want to join on this decision and not feel like I'm making some separate decision. Like, what, what, what does the spirit want here? Can I step back and just be open to hearing that rather than, rather than from acting from from an old patterned way of doing things? 
I noticed that as well. You know, this journey is is not a solo journey. So I just know through experience on this path that when I join with a brother and I hold nothing back to share my thoughts and then sincerely um, pray together to hear the Holy Spirit, the Spirit comes in very clearly. So it's not my plan, it's not your plan, but that's tune in together to the Spirit's plan. And it's very quick, it's very easy that it comes in to our minds. Yeah, I mean, that that is something that I feel um, just, I mean, it sort of happened this morning and I've noticed it in recent months. I've had, you know, a few occasions when I've joined with you. And a couple of times it was sort of around next steps or just different things that were going on. And, um, I, yeah, I do feel... Um, that it's like, yeah, it sort of feels like maybe maybe there are different ones where, you know, you feel that sort of depth of trust or something and, and things just like the miracle just kicks in straight away and um, or, or very, very quickly. And I, I do feel, yeah, I do feel really grateful to have that, to have that um, link with you because it seems like something happens when I talk with you that I'm almost like elevated into some different uh, different state of mind um so um <laughs> yeah I, yeah <laughs> yeah i think it is just our desire and willingness to to join to truly join connect in mind and put aside um our own plans and i do feel that is one thing that I've learned on this journey, how quickly spirit answers. Mm. When I, especially when I'm with a brother, when we join minds and connect to want to hear the spirit sincerely together, how quickly it comes through. It's very, very quick. And that is just so comforting because, you know, even when we were starting this podcast, I think all the stress that you were experiencing was this feeling of, I have to count on myself. I have to rely on myself. I have to know, I have to do, I have to have things to say. It's all on me. And that is a very stressful way of thinking. And truly this spiritual journey is not about getting better at that and developing more skills so that we can have more confidence of ourself that is developed but more is a stepping back and saying let me know the spirit truly once i know the spirit then i know the solution is right right with me you know i can count on that that is so mighty and so comforting yeah yeah it's funny you know we we one of the topics like the idea of worthiness and and, and obviously um <laughs> the, the feeling of unworthiness like comes up strongly in mind and i feel like that's something you know was probably playing out quite a bit um early this morning and 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 even as we're talking i i sort of feel that that um the idea of like pride as well feels like somehow these ideas are all interwoven you know that there's a sort of a sense of pride of wanting to you know to appear to sort of um <laughs> know something i guess really like to to have some kind of um you know not to look like a complete <laughs> Twit, <laughs> you know, like, um, <laughs> and yet, I mean, I, I don't know. Like, it's so easy to say the words from the course, like all those like thousands and thousands of words in the text, where he's sort of pointing to that that state of mind of like, I I do not know the thing I am. I do not know what I'm doing, or where I'm, and and yet, 
when when it actually comes to it, it's like, wow, this feels kind of frightening to to actually can I really expose that right now? Like, um, and and it does it does feel a little bit like more than just you know a little bit different than just talking to you. It's like there's there's this sort of awareness in the back of my mind. Well, you know who who's going to be listening to this? You know, like do I really want to expose this kind of clueless? Um, you know, the ego would have stronger word. Like, you know, you're, you're, you know, you, you're, you're stupid. You don't have anything. You know, like it sort of wants to somehow just, just to keep it. Maybe not quite. Don't, don't, don't be so raw. Don't just cover it. Try and try and contain or keep maintain some sense of um, of control or something. But it sort of almost feels like it's getting harder to do that in this type of situation, which. Which I can, I can, on the one hand, I can see is a good thing too, but it's, <laughs> yeah, it does feel quite raw. Yeah, I, I do think that, you know, we, we grab with this kind of goal in life that we need to be better and get approval from <clears throat> peers, from the world, from everything. And we have to kind of develop this value self self worth or self sense of value through what we do and you know i i just feel so grateful about this journey because this really changed the way i look at the world and the goal of this life and that is the fundamental thing that shifted and in that um i would say everything shifted because when the end goal shifted, all the means and and even trust is possible. The previous kind of um, goal in life, all that I can trust is myself. And all that I can trust is what the world is telling me and what I can accumulate. That's That's what I depend on. I depend on myself. I depend on the the things in the world, and it feels so um, so shaky, so unstable. Because everything that I I could rely on would eventually fall. But then here we are, knowing that the end goal is to get direct connection with the spirit to know the spirit to know our true spirit and to know that we can count on that and that is that's very resting even the goal is relaxing and then of course on this journey it is a sorting out truly what is the goal for this particular decision, for this particular moment. And that's really the only thing that is conflicting in our mind. And then if that is in conflict, if we're still holding on to, no, I need to rely on myself, Mm -hmm. then everything seems to have this um, shakiness, this unstable feeling. Everything is unstable, I have to rely on myself. But I think this journey eventually is just to 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 keep walking this path and giving ourselves permission to call on the spirit and call on Jesus to say, you mm-hmm. know, help me now, show me now, are you here now? And that is all that is asked of us and show up, show up in mm-hmm. empty mind so that we can call on him yeah yeah so in that sense it does it's like yeah it does feel like um it feels so new and also like quite sort of on the edge this um yeah there's uh, <laughs> it's like no really no kind of reference point to use in a way like no the spirit is the spirit of joy and the spirit of of life you know, when when I'm open to the spirit, I feel alive. I feel vibrancy. I feel joy. 
And sometimes we call it activation because you feel activated. You know, you feel full of life, feel full of vibrancy. And that's that's all that we're counting on because that is the state of mind we're calling for. And the rest of it is is completely given, you know, the form of things, how to reach there, how to stay in there, you know, whether there are anything to say, whether there's anything to do is completely um, given over to the spirit. And I noticed that the more I focus on the decisions in form, uh, the less I'm able to to stay in that kind of vibrancy. But if I give my attention and my priority to, you know, even in prayer, I want to feel your peace. I want to feel your joy, whatever that might help that, you know, give me instructions. And it is very, very easy and very, very quick. And of course, then the instructions are given just they don't really matter because the goal has already been achieved. It's a state of mind goal. Mm -hmm. So I think even, you know, with this, this morning, what happened, it's very typical when, if we think we have to rely on ourselves, we have to be prepared (laughs) to, to do something based on our readiness. (laughs) Actually, You know, Jesus says, do not question your readiness, but trust mine. Mm. Do not question your own readiness, but trust mine. So in a way, he is really saying, you know, I have all the answers. Mm. I will instruct you what to do. I will give you the means. I'll give you the people. I'll give you the words. And you can relax if you don't count on yourself, but trust in me and just really let yourself go there. Mm. So I feel like, yeah, you're doing it. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, just those words, it does feel really. Peaceful, just listening to what you're just saying there. Of um, something about it, actually, all it's all very, like it, in a way, all very simple. Uh, there's something very simple about, and yet it's like it's it's kind of quite foreign as well to to that you know to the part of my mind that's always wanted to you know to I guess to have some kind of control and to feel like it has to contribute and um yeah it wants to <laughs> it wants to give it opinions it'll, it's like kind of like stepping right back from all of that and um uh even just allowing the silence sometimes can feel a little bit um i don't know there's something like the ego wants to rush in to try and feel that but yeah it feels like that's part of the thing too of just is it okay just to kind of not have, you know not to speak and maybe the the silence can can say more than you know than my than, than 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 you know than an idea that that I think is some cherished idea from the past. Maybe that's not even to be offered right now. Like yeah, I do feel that this life is so given to us by the spirit. If we step out of the way, even the means, you know, when you were saying that you feel it's so frightening and it's so new. And because it is so new, it is something that we cannot undo by ourselves. Nobody will really be able to undo the ego by ourselves. We really do need to rely on a helper. So even this, particular setup or this particular event was given by the spirit to help us walk into this moment 
fully empty handed because mm. you have absolutely no plan. You actually are so ready to just let it all go. And I didn't either. So we, we walk in completely empty handed and basically say, here we are. And this is how I see this life is about. It's just this every single moment spirit is offered this opportunity that we're ready for. I wouldn't even give it to you unless you're ready. That's what the spirit is always saying. You are ready for this. Just step in, just show up. Yeah, I guess it's feel like just, just being willing even just to um, just to pause for a moment and just go, yes, you know, and um, because, you know, I know like in the course the it tells us like the ego always answers first and loudest. It's the kind of always the one that's, you know, roaring and wanting to direct and, and, and puff its chest up and think it knows. And it's just like, but I feel like even like this whole time right now, this morning, it's like, it feels like it's almost just a beautiful reminder, you know, for myself, like joining with you in this way of just, can I just, um, pause for a moment and you know and and listen a little deeper you know listen beyond that um that habituate habituated way of of um of, of of operating or what whatever and and just listen to something you know trust trust that there's actually there's something holding there's something carrying me there's something that's um real and something that i really want um that you know that is um like is a blessing for even not just for me there's this feeling you you know we talked before about this higher purpose it, it's sort of it's like it's even beyond beyond this kind of sense of a colon there's something like how do i know where these words maybe go how they will be received like it's it's almost like feels like that of just trusting that there's um you know there's something uh, greater that's being orchestrated and um and like in truth that's what i want to um say yes to <laughs> i guess that's where like the training almost of and the, the forgiveness as well of you know these crazy ideas that you know there's an idea of that something can be done perfectly or you know like that's just not true it's kind of like i guess this whole thing feels just like a almost like a cleaning out everything i guess can be seen as as like a cleaning out a clearing out so that ultimately the vessel becomes so purified you know but but it's 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 sort of like um not helpful to try to um to try to um you know to attempt to 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 operate from a level that you know like if there's that clearing out still occurring like because even i think i think there's something in the teacher's manual where jesus even says you know like you know obviously the the teachers of god they have a very important function but he said he said they're not perfect he said but they're here to teach perfection <laughs> over and over until they hear it like it's like it's kind of like that, that just that idea feels so counter to what the ego the ego would want to i want to have everything together i want to have all my notes i want to get it all right but there's the, the jesus is saying no no your job is to show up and to be used and in that your mind has been purified until yeah. it's washed and washed until it's you know but it's kind of like almost like it's not of my, none of my business in a way what whatever's going to be um released is is going to be released i can't you know like i can't be the one to to, to say how it's going to look because like, it's, it's, that, that, that way it feels so stilted so so um like unrealistic as well um to try to um almost control the whole um the whole playing out of everything it's like just showing up and okay i don't know what this is going to look like but i trust i trust you're with me and yeah yes i'm i'm, I'm, I'm i'll say yes <laughs> The moment we focus on form goal, we lose the the content. Meaning, the content is the essence, is is the state of mind, is this 
this vibrancy. The moment we focus on the form, we we lose track of this other um, real goal. And I found the only thing is is that the more we enter into any task, knowing that this is absolutely for my connection. So I'm just entering in asking in a prayer, in a state of prayer. I'm in here to receive anything. I'm in here to, to at the same time, um, experience the spirit, but also extend the spirit. Then you truly wouldn't care about the form goal because the, the experience would be yours in that moment. And that is, I think, what you're saying. It's like that is the purpose. And that is where the world takes on a new purpose for us. And everything actually becomes meaningful again in that way. We know why we do anything. We do it just because we're here to unlearn the past, to experience the spirit, to, to have a direct connection with the spirit and to, do, to carry out what he instructs us to do so that we can experience the miracles. So that that's makes this life very meaningful. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like it's just plays out or it is playing out on quite a practical level, even as I speak with you now. Like I've just noticed, you know, just then my mind would be like, you know, just listening to you. And then, you know, there's a temptation to kind of, you know, like an inner voice saying, you better have something now when Francis stops speaking, you better, you know, have something to continue the flow of this call um and yet um i think it feels like a um i don't know i feel like i feel like i feel like just 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 in the, in that in that moment there's like the opportunity to actually put it into practice of like no i don't need to i don't need to engage in that i can can i listen beyond and 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 right now even just exposing that feels like it's a helpful thing because <laughs> it's not it's kind of like not the you know the ego doesn't even want that really to be raised it doesn't really want that to be exposed somehow that's almost part of the game to try to um perpetuate this idea of you know i know something so let me try and save face here you know but it's like okay there's um yeah yeah mm -hmm. and i think it is powerful to actually be able to hear ego's voice because a lot of the times we identify that as our own voice so when it says something it's like obliged to follow and to act on it but that that voice is the ego's voice saying you better you better have this you better do this you better together you better look good to other people you better not look like a fool the moment we drop that and actually recently i i saw a youtube video it's um, this guy, he was talking about the voice in his mind. It was debilitating. It was so much attack thoughts in his mind. Mm. And he, he said the first attack thoughts was all attacking himself, saying mm. he's no good for anything. And, and it was so debilitating. And in desperation, he cried out to Jesus. Mm. He said, I can't, I can't handle these thoughts anymore. And he said, Jesus shows up in his vision and basically just unplugged those thoughts and said, they're not yours. He said he felt so much peace, but afterwards, you know, in the days or weeks or months to follow, all these thoughts turned into another direction, which is you are the victim. You know, it's not your fault, but it's everybody else's fault. And he, he said he didn't know how, but he just basically said, I'm not even listening to that. I'm not a victim. And just by putting down those thoughts, 
he had a mystical experience. He said first he he saw himself um, elevated from his chair. Then the next moment he opens his eyes, he was in heaven. It's almost like a similar, like a near death experience because he's, he saw Jesus in there and he was just so emotional. And, and he said, people ask me, do you breathe air when you were there? And he said, no, I breathe love. That is the only thing that is exists there is so much love. And I, I just also had that kind of experience where I just know the ego thoughts as real as they sounded and felt the moment we're willing to put them aside, the thin um, veil of the whole world can collapse. Mm. It can co- collapse just like that. You know, and I, I remember that actually the, I had this one experience in, in the Living Miracles Monastery when I was meditating one day. I think it could be a course book lesson that just saying, quiet your mind and bypass all the thoughts that rises. And I was following the instructions and then the thought came about something that I experienced earlier. And I said, oh no. And I just stopped it. When deeper next thought came, I stopped it. And the third thought came, basically is assessing my meditation saying, good, good, you, you stopped. Um, you follow the instruction and I even stopped that thought and the moment I stopped only three thoughts the light just rushed through and the whole world disappeared in light and I came back from that experience I mean what I realized was how how thin a veil this world is It, it feels solid when we touch things but it's really just a few thoughts away. We're just a few thoughts away. Mm. If we enter into each moment, just, uh, just be willing to let go of those past thoughts, ego mm. thoughts that don't serve, then this journey is, mm. is a destined journey. The end is destined. Yeah, I like that um, that idea that it's just like it's actually a very, very thin veil, and um, and I think that um, that idea can be very helpful because um, I just my feeling is like the closer you know the closer we get to um, if you like you know penetrating it or or allowing it to dissolve like it, it I, th- I feel like that is the most um obvious times when the ego will start roaring much more loudly and really try to get the attention to try to convince the mind that no 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 it's not a thin veil you know and 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 yet it's i i, I have had um you know, even even this morning feels somewhat of that type of experience, a little bit of of kind of um, feeling like no, I wouldn't be doing this. And then just as as we as we just join together, you know, there is this feeling a bit of like, um, what was all that? You know, what was all that fuss about? Like it's kind of almost it's nothing. The more we just join, and the more I allow myself to connect. With something beyond the, you know, the, the, um, I guess the, yeah, the, the fearful thoughts. Really, I suppose that's all they are. Um, um, it's almost like where, where, <laughs> where, where is that now? Where was it? You know, it's, it's kind of, it just, it just almost like it just melts. Well, how does it melt away? Well, like, you know, just, I guess, just through the willingness to show up and. Um, and you know, ask for help. Um, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. Really beautiful, Colin. I think you actually voiced um, some kind of ego pattern 
I think this is the way the ego tricks us. Just like I know what I want to do, and I know what is beneficial. I know, you know, it's this I know, and then these conclusions are are made. Then the decisions are made on top of that to lock it in. So it's like layers and layers of assumptions. So in this life, we're just making decisions, but not knowing that those decisions serve a purpose to lock in the ego's definition of who we are, you know, and just layers upon layers, decisions upon decisions. So right now, I feel, you know, it's it's a beautiful demonstration that, yeah, none of none of those thoughts and beliefs need to be need to be held on to. We can just let them go and and see, you know, mm-hmm. walk a walk of trust. Because yeah, in a way, it's like it. <clears throat> I don't know, just the idea of like what what took place, you know, before or yesterday, or like it's it really doesn't have any meaning, does it? It's kind of like, because even if it was wonderful, in a way it's deathly just to kind of keep the mind focused on because all of life that's available now in this moment, it, like you said, in, in in just, you know, dropping below that that thin veil and really connecting with the spirit or connecting with your brother um, and then there's something mm-hmm. uh, completely vibrant completely new that's available um mm-hmm. and in that there's no past like there's no it's like it's not there's no guilt there's no there's just the simplicity of just joining and just being mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah that's it well thank you so much for for being so trusting and just show up yeah oh, what a demonstration for <laughs> thank you thank you for yeah, thanks for joining, Francis. It's been really precious. And yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, pleasure. And thank you, everyone, for joining us. Hope to see you next time. <laughs>